My name is Chandler Kramer. I'm from Waco, Texas, and I've been playing disc golf for about three-ish years now. I started in 2020 at the beginning of the year, and then I started playing tournaments for the PDGA and stuff like that in July of 2020. I started playing soccer when I was little, then transitioned to baseball, then transitioned into tennis. My parents really wanted to get me into sports because I think my dad played a ton of sports when he was growing up. My mom uh, played a ton as well. And then in college, I played ultimate frisbee, and I actually got into disc golf whenever COVID started happening and the practices that we had going on for Ultimate were kind of getting canceled and modified and we couldn't really go out as a whole team, but I still wanted to be active somehow and I still wanted to throw a Frisbee or a disc or whatever it was. And I remember I had like one or two set aside that some, my sister had actually got me as a gift for my birthday that she thought was an Ultimate disc. And I was like, oh no, it's not that disc. I was like, it's a thought that counts, thanks though. I went out and threw it and played a couple times and I thought this was really fun and then one of the few times that I actually went out I played with a group of friends and I actually aced and pretty much from then on I have just been playing ever since so it really got me hooked that first experience the ace is what really did it for me I started touring in 2022 last year so I graduated from A&M with my degree in electrical engineering in December of 2021. During the year, um, I had struggled a little bit early on during that season. And then I had a couple of good finishes, believe it or not, that were like, I think I had like a top 10 at like Beaver State or something like that, or tied for 10th. So like I had some good finishes here and there, but I was still relatively unknown. Some of the other US people, like they knew who I was because I was on tour already, like Kevin uh, Jones and Luke Humphreys, they were like, oh, like they're like, we know who you are. Like they're super cool. They're like, what are you doing over here? I'm like, I'm here to play. And they're like, sick, cool. I went to European Open, really there was probably one shot that really got people's attention was the roller on hole 10 that everybody saw a bunch of. And then they watched my round and then they were like, oh, he's doing really well. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's me, like the weird kid with green hair. And I got on lead card a couple times and I think a lot of people took notice. It was either the second or third round, either I shot the hot round or it was already after I was on lead card for one round. I had a ton of people message me, follow me, whatever the case was. And they were like, dude, we're rooting for you so hard, like keep it up. And I was like, I appreciate that. But I was relatively unknown until Europe came. So it kind of just worked out, I guess, like me just being like, hey, I'm gonna go try that over. I'm gonna go travel across. The <laughs> that was the first time I ever went out of the US too. I, I never had gone out of the US until that time. Uh, and it really worked out. So I'm glad I did that. And I'm looking forward to going back this year. I'm actually having a total uh, tracker for the year for backhands. I think I threw, at Vegas I threw one. Waco I threw one. Austin, I didn't play Austin. I had, at a wedding I was attending. Texas States, I think I threw, I don't think I threw any at Texas States. So zero at Texas States and then now we're here and I don't think I throw any backhands on the course. So I know a couple events coming up, there will be backhands. Good luck on trying to get it filmed because I don't know if it's going to be filmed or not, but I, I do plan on throwing some backhands. I actually worked on it quite a bit during the off season. So there's sometimes, depending on the holes, whenever they, they there will be some holes that dra gradually go left, and I don't consider those to be exactly a backhand hole because if it's a gradual fade, that's usually what a turnover shot is, but think about it for the opposite uh, aspect of like a forehand. So if you see a hole that gradually goes right, people are going to think, oh, it's a forehand. But then you can also see a bunch of people, like I know Dickerson is one of the people that throws, or Paul or somebody, like people who have been throwing backhands for quite a while, it's a slow drift. And it's kind of the same way that they picture a slow drift that I see a slow drift on the opposite side for a backhand shot. So it's one of those things. There are some times where it is so far left that I can throw a roller. And then depending on like tree locations or if there's a mando, sometimes it is just not a forehand and I gotta suck it up and throw a backhand. And then there's some holes that are just not friendly to anything and good luck. So there's actually a hole on this course that in my opinion is not forehand friendly, backhand friendly or player friendly. So you're just gonna have to pitch one up and hope you take a par. Me and Rob are actually looking for bag sponsorships in the off season because I, I like my bag, but there were some issues with it and, and whatnot. Oddly enough, just like the moment, like we were texting me and Rob were about like, hey, they're like, let's gonna look and see what other companies are out there for like bags and stuff. And almost immediately following that, it was weird timing. Discology actually messaged me and they were like, hey, if you got a moment, we'd like to talk to you about a bag sponsorship. And I texted Rob back, was like, hey, I think I've found something a little bit already. 
And they reached out to me, they gave me a phone call, they talked about what they were trying to do. They're trying to provide extremely high quality bags at more affordable prices because you've got some other companies, I'm not gonna list them out, but you've, you've seen them. The like really high quality ones, they're like three or $400. They're really expensive. Some of the bags, like there was one brand new one that we're gonna be unveiling today, it's the Icon. This thing has as much room as any other bag I've ever had. It's got more pockets so I can put other stuff like extra towels. I can do, it's got a, a rain fly. So for any time we have inclement weather, cause let's be real, we never have inclement weather on the Pro Tour. There's just so much for, room for it. And it's way, it's probably at least a third of the price. And I really love that. Like I'm completely on board with their mission.